A very good evening everyone and welcome to this special program on Adha Dharana 24-7. Tonight we are going to talk about an emerging health crisis in the central province of Sri Lanka. Now it's been found that uh, there's a rise in respiratory diseases in, in Kandy and then nearby areas. So tonight we are going to discuss on that uh, in this program and I have two guests joining with me uh, this uh, evening and uh, it's uh, Dr. Chandana Kulatunga who is the consultant respiratory physician of the Provincial General Hospital in Ratnapura as well as the president of the Sri Lanka College of Pulmonologists and then Mr. Azam Javed, who is the CEO of uh, Sipla Pharma Lanka Private Limited. Welcome uh, both of you to the program. Welcome, okay, and uh, first uh, let's start off with uh, Dr. Kulatunga. Now, Dr. Kulatunga, why is there's a rise in these diseases in the Kandy and nearby areas? Yeah, our, we uh, respiratory physicians of Sri Lanka have observed that uh, the prevalence of uh, respiratory symptoms uh, like uh, cough, uh, wheezing, and sometimes runny nose and the respiratory diseases is increasing. So we, we think that air pollution is an uh, important cause for this increasing uh, prevalence of respiratory symptoms and respiratory diseases. Uh, uh, Sri Lanka College of Pulmonologists, uh, we have a theme uh, to act. So our theme in 2018 uh, is clean air and healthy lungs. So basically, uh, we are organizing uh, programs on air pollution to educate people and the policy makers. Uh, uh, according to the available evidence, uh, we think that Kandy city is polluted uh, more than other cities of Sri Lanka, but we need further studies to confirm that. Uh, therefore, we organize this uh, event uh, in Kandy uh, to celebrate World Environment Day. Okay. And uh, Dr. Kulatunga, now what types of diseases, uh, respiratory diseases, are there uh, commonly in the in these areas? Uh, actually, uh, <coughs> most of us think that uh, if uh, when we inhale toxic uh, dusts and fumes, we think that our lungs only our lungs become diseased, but it's not uh, like that. Hmm? Uh, according to the WHO, the World Health Organization statistics. Hmm? Uh, in 2015, there had been 8 million deaths directly attributed to this air pollution. Out of these uh, 8 million deaths, mm, actually 60 percent uh, of uh, uh, pay, uh, persons died due to the heart disease and strokes and 40 percent only died due to respiratory diseases. So I will explain some uh, respiratory diseases which results from air pollution. Uh, first, uh, I can divide this. Uh, uh, symptoms and the diseases uh, into two categories, acute and the chronic or long, uh, long term. So acute uh, uh, diseases or symptoms include uh, the, the patients can develop cough, uh, wheezing or difficulty in breathing and sometimes runny nose. And uh, when the patient, the, uh, the people are exposed to these toxic dust and fumes in a, a long uh, way, lo uh, for a uh, long time, the patients can develop uh, uh, asthma and the, pa the patients can develop chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. These, are, uh, these patients pre the, the develop shortness of breath and uh, wheezing. And uh, the following exposure to the, again, this does the patient can end up with lung cancer actually, lung malignancies. Uh, in the past, we thought that the most important cause for lung cancer is smoking. But now scientists have found that. Uh, following exposure to especially the diesel vehicle exposed, the we can develop lung cancer. And the next uh, important thing, the, the we have observed that uh, pneumonia, lung infections are common nowadays. And so uh, we believe that this is due to uh, the air pollution. And uh, the other important fact that I should mention is that, hmm, especially in children, in uh, the European and uh, other developed countries, they have found that. Hmm, if the children are exposed to these toxic dust and fumes, their lung development is going to be affected. Their lung becomes uh, the get uh, low the low volume compared to the the children who are not exposed to these uh, toxic dusts. So therefore, the children, our the, if you think of our actually this the schools in Sri Lanka, uh, they are situated in the middle of the cities actually. So these children 
uh, are in high risk. And not only the, this, these children, even uh, unborn, the, the, the fetus can be affected uh, to this air, the air pollutants. Uh, so I think this is the most pathetic uh, story of uh, the air pollution. If the pregnant mothers are exposed to these toxic dusts and uh, fumes, uh, their fetus, uh, the growth of their fetus can be affected and even the, the, they can uh, born up with congenital abnormalities. Okay. So, uh, can you, doctor, tell us uh, how, what, what's the situation when it comes to candy specifically? How is it actually affecting candy so far? Yes. In terms of statistics and uh, what you've found, found out so far? Yeah. Uh, there, are, uh, there are some studies uh, done with regard to air pollution. So, according to a study uh, done by Professor Ilay Piruma, it, it, it has shown that the Kandy city is polluted even more than Colombo. But there are some later, some contradictory reports, but I think we need further investigations or studies to confirm this. But uh, we have observed that this, uh, the patients with, uh, the, pa the, the, there is increase of uh, prevalence of respiratory diseases in Kandy. Uh, compared to uh, others, other cities and therefore we think that this uh, increase in prevalence of these respiratory symptoms and diseases are mainly due to related to air pollution. Okay. Uh, my question is for you Mr. Javad. Now uh, CIPLA joined hands with the Sri Lanka College of uh, Pulmonologists to launch this movement called Save Your City Candy. Save your lungs, candy. Yeah. Save yeah. your lungs, candy. Sorry. Yes. So, um, can you maybe talk, uh, elaborate on the movement? Sure, sure. So, so hi everyone. So, uh, what I, uh, what you know, like uh, we have our mastermind group, you know, in the company. So, uh, we were sitting, you know, and discussing about, you know, like uh, how we can, you know, create more awareness on, uh, you know, we knew, you know, like there is a lot of uh, works to be done in terms of creating awareness. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, you know, during the brainstorming session, yes, you know, we said, okay, let's do something like this uh, to create awareness about air pollution. Then we also kind of, you know, dig deep into, you know, statistics and, you know, to certain informations. Then we found that, you know, candy would be the most appropriate uh, place. So uh, coincidentally, uh, you know, then, you know, so the best partner or best uh, uh, machine, uh, you know, to do this, you know, uh, probably the College of Pulmonologists. So, uh, Dr. Chandan being the president, so we approached him. So, he welcomed the idea and uh, he said, okay, why not we do it during the World Environment Day, which fell on the 5th of uh, June. So, uh, that's how it started. And, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, the, the amount of work that went behind this uh, was enormous, you know, like, although it may, you know, for the first time we also did this, uh, of, uh, you know, this uh, activity. And we felt that, you know, uh, uh, you know, today we are sitting here, you know, like uh, being a uh, 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 fulfilled, you know, team of, uh, uh, you know, uh, people, where we uh, felt that, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, it was a very good start. So uh, that's how, you know, it all started and, you know, so we did certain activities in Candy. So maybe I can brief, you know, how it started in Candy also. So uh, after the discussion, we decided on Candy, then, you know, we also got, uh, uh, Dr. Dushanta Madhagedara's uh, involvement in this uh, uh, event. So uh, we organized and you know, so on the 5th, uh, what happened, you know, so we started the walk around the candy city. Uh, then uh, immediately after that, you know, we had, uh, you know, speeches with uh, Dr. Chandana, Dr. Madhagedara and few other prominent uh, people, you know, spoke, you know, for, uh, you know, to the audience there. So we had a good gathering there. Then, uh, so immediately after that, you know, we uh, ended up uh, uh, by doing a press conference. And also we had uh, free screening, you know, so we had about uh, uh, five uh, spirometric test, uh, you know, counters. So we screened something like, you know, 150 patients there. And uh, that was, a, a, you know, a good satisfying, uh, you know, uh, uh, event overall for us. Okay. And uh, you've also launched uh, this uh, helpline for people who might want to yes, discuss all yes, the matters. Yes, so. yes, So uh, what we have done, you know, so we have gone to the extent of, you know, uh, uh, inform the public. And, you know, this helpline is going to be available for uh, next six months. And, you know, so this uh, dedicated line is, uh, you know, there will be a doctor. Anytime when you call, you know, this doctor will be there. 
to give you uh, guidance and direction and as to you know like as you know they will be able to help you in in uh, many ways you know so i re request the, uh, you know the general public yes. you know to uh, call this number yeah uh, and uh, there will be other uh, you know communications also you know uh, uh, across so the number is uh, yeah number is uh, uh, so 0 71 408080 okay Zero seven one four zero eight zero eight zero. Okay, it's zero seven one four zero eight zero eight zero. Yes. All right, um, Mr. Javad. Now, what activities did you actually organize for this movement? So, as it is, you know, like this is the first phase that what, what we did, you know, to create the awareness, and we uh, did the walk around the candy, then uh, uh, candy city. Then uh, we also had uh, screening processes. So, what are the plans that you know we have for the you know uh, you know phase two, phase three, is that you know so we would want to get into uh, schools and you know to create awareness in schools because that's we felt that you know that is where you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the next generation, next generation, yeah, next right. generation, and also that awareness will last you know uh, for a longer period of time, you know, because we remember that certain things that you know we did in school. And probably I think you know we will have uh, you know uh, certain activities around it. So we have not clearly defined you know so as to you know what uh, next steps are. But you know like uh, you know like we will have you know every uh, quarter, every three months you know such activities uh, aimed at the general public. Okay, and then um, uh, Dr. Kulazunga, now how important is is it for people to understand about these? Uh, uh, diseases and maybe uh, try to actually get their medication as soon as these symptoms arise. Yes, and uh, so actually uh, the the symptoms uh, uh, would be the first the, the patients can develop cough, and uh, sometimes we can actually this we have uh, observed that especially in uh, school children the prevalence of wheezing. Uh, has increased, and then the uh, patients uh, uh, later these patients can develop uh, bronchial asthma or uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and even lung cancer. Actually, uh, I think more than the the symptoms, the people should know the causes of air pollution. That's very important, and then they can contribute to the minimize the, the they can get, get take positive actions to minimize air pollution. So we can divide air pollution into two. Uh, two categories. First, the indoor air pollution, and second, outdoor air pollution. So, indoor air pollution means the the pollution of air, the inside the the living place. So, main causes are actually the use of biomass fuel, the the wood, and next thing, the burning of mosquito coils. Again, important cause for indoor air pollution as well as smoking. And next, the outdoor air pollution. The most important cause for outdoor air pollution being the vehicle exhaust, and then the, there's various toxic dusts and fumes coming from these various factories, and then the, the burning of uh, these waste products in public areas. So the knowing the causes of air pollution is very important, and whatever the type of the, the air pollution, the the effects, human health effects will be the equal. So what the may be outdoor air pollution, may be indoor air pollution, therefore. Uh, so, the, the more than the symptoms, I think it's important to know the causes of air pollution. Okay. Um, doctor, we have much to talk about on the matter, but uh, before that, we'll have to go in for a short commercial break. Do stay with us. Welcome back everyone to the program. Uh, as you all have been listening to us, we've been talking about this health crisis in the Candy, uh, in the Candy district and then uh, nearby areas. Now, uh, Dr. Kulatunga, it was published that the average traffic movement in Candy uh, is low and that it causes these health issues. What is the relationship between these uh, traffic movement and then this health crisis? Yes. Uh, when the average uh, traffic movement is uh, low, 
I think uh, in a given point of time, the number of vehicles in the city will be high. And therefore, the apparently the emissions, uh, the vehicle exhaust and the emissions will be uh, high and so this contributes to the air pollution immensely. And next thing, when there is traffic, actually, the most of us think that the uh, uh, not only the, this the emissions from burning of fuels, but the, the brake system of the vehicles as well as the tyres also contribute to the, uh, the air pollution because uh, the particulate matters, the, or, or, or what is called dust, comes from tyres and even from the brake system. So when the, the traffic is heavy, so all these contribute to the uh, development of air pollution. Okay. And then Mr. Jawad now um, so moving. So in addition to that, yes. I think uh, the, the how the Kandy city's loca location is also uh, yeah, that's, contributing. That's uh, yeah. very important. Yeah, yeah. actually, uh, the Kandy city is actually sur sur uh, surrounded by a mountain of ra the, uh, the range of mountains, actually. Uh, so then this, uh, uh, usually in other areas, the uh, pollutant air is washed away. But because of this, uh, the mountains, the polluted air accumulates in the city. So this is also important contributor, contributor factor for the uh, increased amount of air pollution in Kandy. And then, um, uh, Mr. Javad, now have you seen a rise in other diseases because of environmental um, pollution and uh, as such? See, I think uh, environmental pollution, now we are talking about, you know, uh, COPD, we are talking about asthma, we are talking about allergic rhinitis, you know, so in respiratory, you know, so the, the spectrum is large. So as it is, I think what is happening is that, you know, uh, the awareness, you know, awareness is, you know, uh, you know very, very low uh, among the uh, general public. So we have a population which is, you know, 92 percent or 90 above you know, a literacy rate. So it's just that, you know, awareness has to be given. And, uh, you know, from there, I think, you know, people are smart and intelligent enough, you know, to take uh, uh, precautions and uh, take precautionary measures for their livelihood. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kulutunga, now, what do you think the authorities of this country should do in this case? Because this could actually uh, go out of hand. There's this potential to yeah. go this situation out of hand. What do you think should they do? Yeah, actually, uh, we can point out the facts and the policymakers should take the decisions. And I think first, uh, the, our people actually, when they, go to the, when they want to go to the next door, actually they use their car vehicles. But first thing, the, the we should promote the walk-in and the cycling. The walk-in actually will be uh, helpful uh, to keep them healthy and it will be very, very important for uh, to minimize our air pollution. And next thing, uh, we should uh, take uh, uh, whatever the measures to minimize the uh, amount of vehicles entering the cities. Uh, because if the, the vehicle traffic or congestion is going to be increased, definitely air pollution is going to be increased. And uh, next thing, we should, uh, I think, use uh, clean burning fuels. This is especially because diesel contains uh, high uh, amount of sulfur. So when the sulfur dioxide accumulates in the environment and uh, when there is sulfur related particulate matters, so the health effects uh, are very hazardous because especially it has found that uh, if you are exposed to diesel vehicle exhaust, you can end up with lung cancer. Therefore, uh, we should use, especially when it comes to diesel, more cleaner burning fuels. And I think next thing, uh, we have to improve our emission testing as well. And uh, 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 the in develop, developed countries, I, told, I explained this earlier also, if the children are exposed to uh, these polluted air, they can end up with lung diseases as well as their lung development is uh, going to be low. Therefore, uh, we have to think of re relocating schools because if you, if you uh, get the schools in Sri Lanka, most of them are situated in the middle of the city. So therefore, but in developed countries, it's not like that. So we have to think of relocating these schools as well as preschools. And uh, okay, all right yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, we have so much to discuss on this topic, uh, uh, gentlemen. But then we are running out of time. 
so we have to end uh, the program right now. And uh, thank you very much uh, for all of you for joining with us tonight. But what we have to understand is there's this emerging health crisis uh, in the country at the moment, uh, in the country as in specifically in Kandy, which could actually lead it to other parts of the country. So we have to be mindful and be aware of this situation. Well, thank you very much for joining with us. Have a very pleasant evening. Good night.